Hello, this is George Senator, the guy from Pittsburgh, and I apologize if you hear the noise of the air blower outside. I hate air blowers with a passion. This guy doing the air blowing started about 20 minutes ago, and it takes him forever to do whatever the hell he's doing. And they're out here four or five times a week. That's one reason I'll be glad when I move. There will be no air blowers in my vicinity. I'll put a sign on anybody with an air blower will be shot. I hate the damn things. Anyway, I want to show you the books I've gotten. Only ones related to the paranormal field, but all of them are interesting and don't make any cracks being books mean idiot books because they say on the back, we know you're not an idiot, and I'm certainly not an idiot. All right, this is Sinatra, the man behind the myth. This one is related to the paranormal field. They talk about Area 51, what really goes on there to Congress, SEAL Team 6, Delta Force, FBI, CAA, NSA. This is the deep state. Got that yesterday. Then the library has these for a buck. And these were 17 bucks originally. So I have the Complete Idiot's Guide to the American Revolution. This is a very hard book to read. because I haven't read the Talmud yet. I'm reading about the Talmud. So this is the Idiot's Guide to the Talmud. I've been reading this one. Idiot's Guide to World War II. And we always seek knowledge, traditionally, and what I like to do. I always want to learn new things. <clears throat> there are facts about World War II I didn't know about. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the corresponding book, The Guide to World War I. And this one is could be considered definitely paranormal. Book of Revelation. <laughs> and finally, no matter what your politics, the books are good reads. I disagree with the, um, the author on Patton, but this one completes the set, except he has a new book on the uh, killing Japan, the end of World War II, Killing Jesus. And I now know more about Julius Caesar and his successors, Herod and his successors, and how they killed Jesus and how the Poor apostles all got tortured and murdered for their faith, and I wanted to know. But it's still a fascinating book. I couldn't put it down, and if you don't know much about Jesus, this wouldn't be a bad start. He does make one strange comment where he says, and I, I, that made me wonder about Bill O'Reilly. He said, there's no better way to pass the time on a transatlantic plane flight than to immerse oneself in Martin Hengel's crucifixion and its countless details about the many ways the Romans used the cross to torment their enemies. <laughs> I don't think that'd be a book I want to read on a transatlantic plane flight. <laughs> I'm nervous enough when I fly because I have a horrible fear of heights. And once on a plane in Germany, we dropped 7,000 feet in like 30 seconds. So I'm afraid when I get on the plane, I'm afraid till we let, get back on the ground. I'm not when I read about crucifixion, not one of my books I want to have and be dreaming about that when I get get wherever I'm going. So I'd fi find something else to read on the flight and make people wonder about you when you go, they go down the aisle, you're reading a book about crucifixion. And I'm like, okay. So I think I'll pass on that one. He does have a, a bibliography of books worth reading, and I may get, get some of those. But, but it's a good read. I got that for... Um, a buck too. So, so that's what I've picked up in the last week, and they have some more of those books at the library uh, for a buck. And I'm going to pick up. Uh, there's one in Christianity, and there's one in Islam, and I have the dummies book in Islam. So, but it's always worth it to know more about a subject, it's partly so I can know to talk about it. All right, head for Kathy's, and. Uh, I will post these videos when I get back. I intend to do it during the night, but I had an eye and sinus attack, and uh, that was the end for me for the evening. All right, this is George Sender, the guy from Pittsburgh. I will be doing a video with Kathy when I get up to the house as soon as we move the ratty patty bed. And we'll show you the crazy ratty patty bed when we're up there. And then I'll get to head back home, and I'm done for the weekend, and i got to...
continue the march on trying to get the cats off the bed so I can vacuum in here. But fuzzy and fu fu fuzzy and little girl love the bed. They sleep on the bed for hours. It's their favorite thing. <laughs> and Fuzzy's so cute because she sleeps next to me now all the time. And when I try to sit down on the sofa bed, she's right there where I got to sit down. I have to move her and she gets very upset. I feel very guilty because she's so cute. But I have to lie down. I go, Fuzzy, I got to move you. But she lies down right in the middle of where I lie down. So she's the most devoted bed cat I've ever had. She loves, she, she goes out a little bit, but she spends 90% of her time lying on the bed. And by the way, if anybody has any ideas, I have given her and little girl and Fluffy various products of flea drops to kill the fleas. And poor Fuzzy is scratching and scratching and scratching and they ain't working. And I don't know if I have to get a dry flea bath. If you have any ideas, uh, please someone let me know in an email or in a comment. Because I feel terrible for it. Now, little girl doesn't scratch that much. Fluffy scratched a little bit. But they go outside and they get fleas from other kitties. And maybe dogs. I don't know. I don't know dog fleas are the same as cat fleas. And the other day... Fuzzy came in, and I petted her tail, and it was full of sand. She rolls out in the sand to try to get rid of the fleas, and she brings the sand to my bed and in my apartment. Drives me nuts. I love her dearly, though, so I never really get mad at her, but it is kind of frustrating. All right, this is George Senator, the guy from Pittsburgh. Have a great day. Stay cool and safe out there, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.